Meaning a big one from Bangladesh. Here's this saying I have heard all my life. Mathe bhate Bangali. Rice and fish make a Bengali. An average Bengali person eats rice and fish based meal twice a day, which is great. But what's not great is that by having this regular lunch and dinner, a person may also consume up to 120 microgram of cadmium. That is more than twice the permissible daily consumption limit according to WHO. Cadmium is a toxic heavy metal which causes skin diseases, kidney diseases, skeletal diseases and last but not the least cancer of multiple organs. So the obvious question is how on earth this toxic metal is coming into our food? The answer my friend is flowing in the rivers. So these industrial wastes coming out of the factories are entering freely into the surrounding rivers from there into the fishes, into the soil, and from there into the plants and crops. And not just in Bangladesh. Cadmium pollution is a real problem in almost all the developing countries who are participating into the industrialization race. And that is bad news. The good news is, instead of letting this cadmium waste free into the environment, we can recycle and encapsulate them using a very sustainable and environment-friendly solution. That's where my research comes in. I work on solar cells made out of cadmium telluride, which is an excellent material for commercial solar cells. Why? Because it produces the cheapest solar electricity. It is a byproduct based material. So the cells made out of it only encapsulates the existing cadmium from the environment and the manufacturing emits the least amount of greenhouse gas compared to all other solar energy materials. Like you see in the slides, conventionally, the semiconductor material used in the solar cells works by absorbing a small portion of the solar radiation to separate the electrons and holes within them to the negative and positive side of the cell. What I am doing is I am using a novel approach of device physics and cadmium telluride along with multiple other layers to absorb more portions of the solar radiation as well as separate the electrons and holes at a better rate to significantly improve the cell performance. To do so, I'm using an affordable technique called electrodeposition, which is easily implementable in the developing countries, but it is possible to commercially produce solar cells literally inside a water tank. In the labs, I'm using beakers instead of water tanks and harnessing sun's energy more efficiently inside these beakers is as exciting as finding a solution for the cadmium pollution problem of the developing world. Thank you.